Cam here from Xano Support, and today we're going to be covering the new unified debugger. It takes our old run and debug and our old debugger, and it combines them into one awesome experience. Now, we're also going to take a look at its impact on the function stack and how we can take the data from our debugger and automatically fill out subpaths, perfect for APIs or complex objects. So let's take a quick look and explore the new unified debugger. So getting started at a high overview, I just want to point out that we're not using any of our inputs here within this particular function stack. This endpoint is actually using a get all raw input function. So when we go ahead and run this, you'll see that I've hard coded some values in the run input section. This is just so that we can simulate what data would look like coming through to this endpoint and how it would interact with all of the elements in our function stack. If we navigate to the blue button, We'll click run. We'll open up this panel that slides out from the right hand side and we'll be presented with the input tab. We also have some other tabs that we can use the response, timing, and debugger, but your input's going to be open by default. And you'll see your auth token UI here if your endpoint is authenticated. And you'll see your input section here where you'll be able to enter values to the inputs here that you have specified within your input section. Or in this case, you can also pass in your own values we can actually interact with it in the get all raw input function. So if we go ahead and actually click run, we can then see as it takes a couple seconds here to interact with an API that will get a response back. And this response will populate in this response tab. In this response tab, we can go ahead and copy our result, copy the curl for this particular endpoint, or copy the auth token. We also have the ability to create a unit test or activate the debugger. Before we activate the debugger, which will show us a UI within our function stack, we can click on timing. Timing is going to show altogether throughout everything how long these elements took to compute. Starting from the very first action to the very last action, we can go ahead and see just ultimately where those hangups are, where we can maybe focus a little bit of attention towards optimization, or maybe just in general, figuring out how long APIs take to respond. Here we can see that API, our API that we're calling here, that processing our data took 3.8 seconds to respond. So it's almost the entire length of this entire function stack. Now it's very helpful to have the timing. It's very helpful to look at how your information is traveling through your function stack. But we also have our debugger, which is going to be a little bit more interactive. If we click this activate debugger button that either is within this debugger tab or under the response will then be presented with this UI here with a stop button, a restart button, and a next button. So we've simplified the controls, but rest assured, if you did like the ability to step in and step out of functions, we also can toggle this advanced option switch, which will show that UI. If you hover over these buttons though, we've also provided the ability to navigate with your keyboard. So I'll toggle off my advanced options and then I'll use my arrow keys to navigate through my function stack. You can see as I navigate through my function stack, the variables on the right are populating. I'll then be able to, seeing that we're at a function, be able to hop inside of it by using my alt and then down arrow key, which lets me travel very freely through all of our architecture, all of our business logic structure. And I'll be able to do the same for everything else here, being able to continue down my function stack, look at the variables here and see the data that populates. With this, this data that does populate, we can actually then use inside our function stack. And this is the next thing that I'd like to focus on. It's our subpaths, and we've completely redefined how we work with subpaths, allowing you to develop even faster. For this example, we're on the subpath endpoint. The subpath endpoint is set up very similar where we're not using any inputs. Instead, we're using that get all raw input function. And I have some hard coded values within that run panel, which is going to simulate how that information would flow. I then have a variable underneath called user session ID, which has a value of just X1. If we go ahead and run this, we'll see here that, well, my data, yep, exactly as it was within my input is exactly as it is in my output. Now, what if I wanted it to be a bit different? This variable is called user session ID. So I can click on user session ID and open up my variable panel where I can select that value. I'll navigate to that subpath button here and I'll click it. Now I have access to all of that data as it was passed through. The reason it exists here is because I've created the variable and then ran my function stack. What if we wanted to go ahead and get some items, maybe all of the names of the items here? I can create a new variable and we'll call this names of items. And I'll take that subpath of X1 again, but you can see there's no value here. I'll go ahead and click save and simply just run it again so that data now exists for this variable. I'll select X1 again, the value here, select the subpath, 
we can see that all of this data is now able to be traversed. The name, I'll simply just navigate to my transactions, my items, and my name. We're also seeing here that when we do navigate to the subpath, if it's an array item, we're specifying that we want to be at index zero. So this zero here is going to indicate that it's the first position within an array. If we remove the zero, we'll now get all of the items of this items array of the property name. So we'll click save and I'll update my output here of names of items and I'll click run again, where we can see here that's exactly what we're getting. So we have the ability with this new unified experience to be able to troubleshoot and debug things either with our tining details or with the interactive debugger using our keyboard controls. And we have the ability to use sophisticated subpaths where once we run that data within our debugger, it's accessible in our function stack. And now we no longer need to copy and paste. We simply just need to run and select our subpath. And that's the new unified debugging experience. Thanks so much for watching and we can't wait for you to use it, try it out and see how it elevates and enhances your workflows and your development. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. You can also reach out to us on the community where we're always there loving to interact with our users. And on the left-hand side of your instance, you can open up a support chat with us and we'd love to help out. Until next time, happy building.